Hi, this is Amar again from SSOtrust.com Australia and in this video I'll be showing you how you can successfully install an SSL certificate on your Apache 2 web server using the Debian command line interface. So let's get started. Now the prerequisites for this video are that you update your server and install Apache. To do that you can refer to the written guide in this description and install Apache successfully. You can then connect your domain name to uh, via DNS settings or just type in your IP address here and if you get a successful Apache to Debian default page then we get to go. Now you need to open your preferred HSH client and I'm going to be using Solar Party for this video and successfully connect to your server, update it and install Apache. After you're done with that, the next thing we're going to type in is check if the OpenSSL library is installed. To OpenSSL and space version. So if you get a certain version of OpenSSL, it means that it, it is installed and we're good to proceed. So what exactly is a CSR and why do you need one? So basically a CSR or customer assignment request is nothing but a request which is initiated by you, the client, to the certificate authority which contains all necessary information such as the domain name and any business details stored in a hashed form. On the technical side, it also contains the public key which will be signed by the certificate authority and returned to you in the issued certificate. So now that you know the importance of a CSR, we're going to move on to generating one. To do so, we are going to be making a default directory to store all of our certificate files and a private key included. So to do that, we're going to type in sudo make directory and we're going to be creating an etc which will be, will be calling encryption or you can call it uh, whatever you like but just make sure to remember this and change this for all commands. You can find these commands in the written guide in the description too. So let's make this directory first. And now the command to generate your CSR and private key at once is sudo open SSL request, sorry, request new key, uh, new, new key which is going to be using the RSA 2048 hashing algorithm note key out and now we we're going to type in the directory that we want to store this in so this will be dash etc slash encryption and the name of your uh, private key whatever you want to call it so let's call it server.key now we're gonna input the CSR output the CSR2 in the same directory that will be done by dash etc slash encryption and the name of your CSR let's call it server.csr click on enter once you're done with that, your private key will be created and you're going to need to fill a few details to get your CSR. So the first thing is the two letter abbreviation for your country, the name of your state, the name of your city or town, the name of your organization, Uh, the organizational unit such as IT or the section of your organization you're issuing the certificate for uh, your domain name your email address and you can either set a password or just leave this empty type in enter enter and let's clear this up so now your certificate would have uh, your CSR sorry would be generated in that very directory and to view that we're going to type in cat 
slash etc slash encryption and the name of your CSR. So this is it. You can uh, copy this from the very start to the very end, including all the dashes and click on control C. So once you're done with that, you can move on to configure your SSL certificate and have it issued. Okay, so now I'm here at the SSL Trust website and we're gonna move on to ordering and configuring our SSL certificate. So basically SSL Trust has established partnerships with all the leading certificate authorities and it doesn't matter whether you are an individual or a small business or an organization. We have certificates to satisfy all your needs and with varied levels of security. So for this video, we're gonna be going, we've already purchased an SSL certificate. To do so, you can click on a standard SSL certificate, click on the Commodore or the Sectica positive SSL, come back here, uh, choose your duration, click on buy SSL, move on here and click on checkout. Type in all your details here and choose your preferred method of payment and complete your order. Once you're done with that, you can head to the SSL Trust dashboard. We've already purchased our certificate and you can click on submit certificate configuration. Scroll down and we're gonna paste in our CSR which we copied. To do so, to verify your CSR, click on this button here. And if your details come up just about right, then we're good to go. Server type, Apache, next step. So fill in all your details here. Your email address. And if you have a, if you're the admin and you have a technical individual doing this for you, uh, please make sure to type in his or her details here too. Otherwise, you can use admin details. We're gonna do so in this video, and click on next step. Once you're done with that, now comes the important part: is the validation of your domain name. Now, to do so, we have three methods which you can use to successfully verify the ownership of your domain name. First one is email. You'll be sent an email to one of these five addresses and you'll be clicking on a link to verify your domain name. The easiest method and the quickest one. The second is the HTTP file. You can uh, create a text file with this name in this directory with these contents. So, and the easiest method that we're gonna be using for this video is the CNAME record validation method. So basically what you have to do is open your DNS settings with your hosting provider or your domain name provider depending on where your name servers are set. So we're gonna do just that. So I'm here at my DNS settings for the domain name ssrguides.com.au. You're gonna go to the CNAME record space and we're going to add a CNAME record here. So we're going to copy the CNAME record and paste it here. Or And the host name or the alias 2 or the CNAME values. Copy this and paste it here. Let the TTL or the time to load be default and click on save. Once you're done with that, you can come back here and click on the check DNS record button here. And now you can just click on search and you have to wait a few minutes depending on your DNS service propagation speed and this should be done within a few minutes up to maximum a few hours. So make sure you keep coming back here and checking your settings to make sure that your CNAME record has propagated and your DNS has been verified. Or you can come back here and we're gonna 
submit our configuration for now. So okay, if you get this message, then you could go. Our configuration was a success. This is our order number and this is our status. And we're awaiting validation. So click here to access the validation manager. Okay, this is the validation manager which will show your verification status. And this is domain control validation. Click here for more details. The C name, CSR hash method, this is uh, your method. Some actions need to be completed and the DNS record needs to propagate. So you can keep coming back here or to do your DNS checkers, the DNS checkers, DNS settings to see if the record has propagated. And if you have a lost, you can come back to the dashboard again after a few minutes and click on your certificate. And you can access the validation manager from here too. So we're going to wait a few minutes for this record to propagate and we'll move on then. Okay, so it, it has been a few minutes and it looks like our DNS records have successfully propagated in a few places, which is in a, enough for our certificate to be issued. And we're going to head over to the dashboard again. Click on your certificate and you can click on this button to collect or download your certificate so the next step in our certificate installation process is uploading the certificate files to our server so what we're going to do now is manually copy and paste them and create a new file in our default directory in which we store all our certificate files and our private key too so what we're going to do now is copy the first certificate, the main certificate to our clipboard and head over to the SSH client again. And what we're going to do now is type in sudo nano, which creates a new file, dash UTC, the default directory, which is encryption. And let's call our certificate, the main certificate, certificate.crt. So once you type in that, you can press Control V, or right click, which will paste your certificate here. Click on Control X, save your buffer, and you've successfully uploaded our main certificate. Now come on to your intermediate certificate, copy it to clipboard and do the same for your intermediate certificate. Type in sudo nano slash etc slash encryption and the name of your intermediate certificate. Let's call it intermediate dot CRT and hit enter. Paste your intermediate certificate, control X, save your buffer, enter. So. Now it is recommended that you upload your intermediate certificate too, so as to uh, minimize the security warnings that your visitors will receive when accessing your website. To minimize, uh, because some browsers require a chain of certificates to be shown to them too, as to com complete the SSL connection. So it is recommended that you uh, install the intermediate certificate too. So this is how easy it was to upload our certificate files. Now we're going to move on to configuring some SSL parameters and our virtual host configuration. So now we're going to create a default SSL parameters file for the Apache web server to follow, which will contain the best SSL practices. To do so, we're going to create a new file in the sudo nano slash etc slash in uh, sorry, Apache 2, confirly available. Uh, you can find all these com uh, commands in the written uh, guide below. So no, no need to worry there. And we're going to name this SSL parameters file as SSL dash params 
parameter.config. So this will create this file, the ssoprams.config file in this directory. So we're going to click on enter and you can, uh, we're going to copy some SSL parameters and paste them here. You can find this in the written guide below and this is the Ubuntu guide. So the SSL parameters are same. So we're going to paste it here. Control X, click on yes and save your buffer. So now we're going to move on to configuring the Apache virtual host. So in this video, we're going to be using the default Apache virtual host. So if you have multiple websites set up on the Apache web server, it is recommended that you use their respective directories to modify the virtual host. So the first thing that we can do now is create a backup for the default SSL configuration so that in case uh, uh, we make any syntax errors, the Apache web server can always revert back to the older configuration. To do that, we're going to type in sudo cp-etc-apache2 slash sites available and default ssl.config. Let's back it up at the same directory. We're going to clip it up apache2. Let's copy it up, copy it here sites available and the, we can call it default ssl.config.backup click on enter so now once we're done with that the next thing we're going to do is access the default ssl configuration by typing in sudo nano etc the same directory Apache 2 sites available and default sl.config type enter. So once you're in here, what we're going to do now is paste in some SSL parameters, which you can find in the written guide in the description. So copy this from the very start to the very end. Come back here to your text editor and paste it here. Now we're going to need to make a few changes before we can save this file. So the first thing that we're going to do is type in your email here. Let's call it SSL guides sl dot guides dot user at rate gmail dot com come back here to document root uh, if this is the default uh, virtual host then it, this is good otherwise you can need to modify it if you're using it for another virtual host server name type in your domain name the alias just type in your domain name with the www Now we're going to scroll down and there's three more things that we need to change. The first one is the path to our certificate, whether wherever you've saved your certificate in whatever directory. So I remember it's in etc encryption and we saved it as uh, the certificate file was called certificate.crt. You name this as such the path to applied key we're going to type in slash etc slash encryption slash equals call server dot key if i remember yes and the path to the intermediate certificate which is going to be 
same directory and we named it as dash etc dash encryption dash uh, intermediate dot crt which is the SSL certificate chain file let me correct my spelling here and we're good to go click on control x and save your buffer now that we've successfully modified our default SSL configuration now we're going to move on to redirect uh, the HTTP version to HTTPS. Now this step is totally optional. If you want to move on, please skip a few minutes ahead. Now to redirect the HTTP version of your site to HTTPS, what we're going to do now is type in a command to access the default triple zero default configuration file. To do that, we're going to type in sudo nano dash etc dash apache2 slash apache2 sites available and slash triple zero dash default dot config type enter now that we've accessed this file this file so um we're gonna we can change the email or leave it as such i'm gonna add in the server name directive as your domain name and we're gonna add in a server alias as www.yourdomainname.com now to redirect uh your http version to https you can come back here just about here is good. We're going to add in a directive here. So scroll down a bit and we're going to type in here as redirect space add a backslash here space double quotes again type in your domain name which then https colon double slash your domain name dot com now once we're done with that we can save this buffer control x click on yes enter and this is how easy it was to successfully redirect the HTTP version of your site to HTTPS. So before we move on to enabling the mod SSL module and configuring and enabling our SSL configurations, what we're gonna do now is check the uh, firewall status. So make sure you always have it enabled. So we're gonna type in sudo yfw app list. So you get the list of apps that the Debian OS or the Apache web server has. Uh, allowed access to all these ports so we want to make sure that uh, users are able to access our website via the uh, secure port the HTTP version and uh, HTTPS version sorry and the HTTP port now it depends uh, which ports you want to allow so for just in case we're going to allow both so we we'll to tap in sudo allow uh 443 which is the ssl port the secure version or the https version uh sorry it is ufw allow 443 and we're gonna allow the http version 2 which is port 80. so type in there and we're good to go let's check in so do you have to pay app list? So once you've done that, we're good to go. Control L. Now we can move on to the next step. So this is the last part of the certificate installation where we need to enable the mod SSL and the mod headers module. So what uh, the Apache web server has a default uh, SSL module called uh, mod SSL. 
to make sure that our SSL certificate successfully functions on our website, we need to enable that. So to do so, we're going to type in sudo a2 enable module SS, uh, SSL. That's done. The next command is sudo a2 enable module headers. Uh, don't yet restart the configuration right now. We are going to type in a few more commands and then you can do so. So we need to activate, the next step is to activate uh, sudo inside the default SSL configuration. Enter. Next thing, we need to enable the default SSL parameters configuration by typing in sudo a2 enable configuration ssl params dot config and once you're done with that we can type in sudo uh, patch it sudo um, a2 sorry sudo patch it to ctl config test So once you're done with that, and sorry, if you get a AH0058 message, and could not really, uh, reliably determine the server's fully qualified domain name, don't worry. If you get the syntax okay, then it means that you have done everything correctly. To uh, make this message go away, you can uh, set the server directive server name globally in the default domain Apache configuration file, which have not touched. But if you get a syntax, okay, it's good to go. There's no problems. But if you still are bugged by this message, then you can change that too. So now we're going to type on system, CTO, restart, Apache 2. So once you're done with that, your SSL should be successfully installed and we're good to go. Let's check the installation of an SSL certificate on our website. Go to https colon double slash your domain name dot com. Hit enter. And if your site shows up, then we're good to go. You've successfully installed an SSL certificate. And our connection to the site is now super secure. Furthermore, to check, uh, uh, you can do a thing or an SSL labs test. You can go to a website called ssllabs.com. And what you can, you can copy your domain name which is HTTPS. And you can test your server's configuration. So what, what this will do is test every aspect of your SSL certificate and make sure that is it is installed correctly and if it does have any er errors it will report them to you and you can change them such as the disabling the older versions of tls and so on so you can click on submit and wait for the results okay so we're done with the test and it looks like we got an overall rating of a which is pretty good we scroll down you can see that everything is good to go the older versions of TLS are disabled, which is good. And pretty much if you get a uh, rating of A, then everything is good. And you have successfully installed an SSL certificate of, on your website and uh, you are now super secure. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, if you liked this video and it helped you install your certificate, please give it a like. If you've got any questions, please post them in the comments below. And until the next video then.